G'day. Today I'd like to discuss these two problems, known as the world's two hardest easy geometry problems. Now they're called that because we're not allowed to use trigonometry to solve them. We must use isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, and congruent triangles, and we could also use parallel lines if needed, to solve them. So I'd just like to review isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, and congruent triangles before we start. If you want to go straight to the problems, here are the video references. First of all, let's have a look at isosceles triangles. An isosceles triangle has two equal sides, by definition, and the angles opposite each of those equal sides are equal. Conversely, if I had a triangle with two equal angles, the sides opposite each of those equal angles are equal. Say I were to label these angles A, B and C. I may as well have labelled this A, B, and B, because as we said, these base angles, as they're called, are equal. That means that A plus 2B equals 180 degrees, because angle sum of a triangle. That implies 2B equals 180 degrees minus A. And that implies B equals 180 degrees minus A over 2. If, for example, A equaled 40 degrees, then B would equal 180 degrees minus 40 degrees over 2 equals 140 degrees over 2 equals 70 degrees. So these two angles would each be 70 degrees. Further, if I were to bisect the angle at A, I would bisect the length of the base. And this line would meet it at a right angle, and this line is a line of symmetry. If I have an equilateral triangle, I have by definition a triangle with three equal sides. Each angle will be 60 degrees. 180 divided by 3 is 60. Note that if I have a triangle with just two equal sides and one angle of 60 degrees, then I would know that this angle is also 60 and this angle also, so it would turn out to be equilateral. If I were to bisect one of the angles of the equilateral triangle, I would bisect the length of the base and it would form a right angle. This goes for every angle of the equilateral triangle. So all these bisected sides become equal and they all meet at right angles and these are all axes of symmetry. I'd like now to do a quick review of congruent triangles. There are five types. SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, and HL. I'll go through those now. First one is SSS, which stands for side, side, side. 
So we have side, side, side. That's self-explanatory. The second is SIS, side, angle, side. That is, two equal sides and an included angle. Note the angle must be included. Now the third type is ASA, angle, side, angle. So we have equal angle and say another equal angle here. Now the side must be included. The fourth type is called AAS. You have two equal angles sorry, and one equal side. Now the equal side must be opposite the same equal angle. So if it were this side in this triangle, it must be that side in that triangle. Now the fifth type is called hypotenuse leg. So if you have a hypotenuse, you have a right triangle. And the hypotenuse of each triangle is the same, and one of the legs is the same. That completes my review of congruent triangles. Let's go to the problems and do them. Problem 1. The first thing to note is that triangle ACB is isosceles, having base angles of 80 degrees. Therefore, angle ACB will be 20 degrees. Now look at triangle AE B. Well, we know the two angles there, they're 70 and 80. Therefore, this angle here will be 30 degrees. A, D, B. We know the angles here are 80 and 60. The angle will be 40 degrees. Number four. Draw a line at D parallel to AB. Mark the intersection with BC as F. Because AB and DF are parallel, we have corresponding angles here and here. Now that is 80 degrees, so this angle here will be 80 degrees. Number six, draw AF. Mark the intersection with BD as G. Because triangle ACB is isosceles, this angle here will also be 60. And that the angle at G will be 60. And that means that this is equilateral. This opposite angle is 60. And since these will be equal, these also will be 60. So both triangles AGB and DFG are equilateral. Now because I know where I'm going with this problem, I'm going to highlight these three equal sides. Note also that this angle here will be 10 degrees. I'd like to look now at a triangle that we've formed AFC. 
Note that the angle FCA is 20 degrees, and the angle FAC is also 20 degrees. We have a triangle with equal base angles. It's isosceles. Therefore, CF equals AF. Number 8. Now draw a line from C to G. This will be along the axis of symmetry because the triangle is isosceles. This forms two other triangles that we're going to look at. That is ACE in blue and CAG in red. Now I want to prove that these are congruent. Well, I can say that CA equals AC because it's common to both triangles. Then look at the angle GCA, which is 10 degrees, and EAC, which is also 10 degrees. Then look at angle a, C, E, and we see that's 20 degrees, and angle C, A, G, which is also 20 degrees. We have two equal angles and an equal side. Is the side included between the two equal angles? Yes, it is. So we have A, S, A. Triangle ACE is congruent to triangle CAG, angle, side, angle. That means CE equals AG. But when we looked at the triangle CFA, we saw that it was isosceles, and that CF equaled AF. Well, if CE equals AG, then EF equals GF. And now I can return to my original diagram. And mark EF as equal to GF. Now I'll just zoom in on this. We see now we have an isosceles triangle, EFD, and we know that the angle EFD is 80 degrees. Now the base angles of this isosceles triangle will be equal. This one is x plus 30, so is this one. So that's 2 times x plus 30 equals 180 degrees minus 80, which is 100 degrees x plus 30 equals 50, x equals 20 degrees. Problem 2. This problem is much better tackled looking at it from side on. So that's what we'll do. Number one, note that ACB is again isosceles, having base angles of 80 degrees and 80 degrees. So that means that this angle here at C is 20 degrees. Next, we can look at the triangle AEB and we see we have an angle here of 60 and an angle here of 80. So therefore this angle is 40 degrees. 
Next we look at triangle ADB. We have an angle here of 50, an angle here of 80. Therefore this angle will be 50. But that means that this triangle is isosceles, having equal base angles. That means that AB equals AD. Now we're going to draw a line from A at an angle of 20 degrees. So we could, with our compass, copy the measure of this angle and reproduce it here. But in any case, we can just draw the line, mark the angle as 20 degrees, and then this angle, because this total is 60, will be 40 degrees. Where this intersects with BC, mark the point as F. Now the angle BFA is going to be 80 degrees angle sum of a triangle. That means we have two base angles and that's why we made this triangle the way we did. So that this becomes isosceles. Now look at the triangle FAE. We have a triangle with two base angles of 40 degrees. It's isosceles. Therefore, FA equals FE. Now we're going to draw a line FD. Consider the triangle AFD. We know it has two equal sides and a top angle of 60 degrees. Well, the base angles will be the same. This is 60 degrees and 60 degrees. And we have an equilateral triangle. For the final step, I wish to concentrate on a particular triangle, which I'll highlight in blue. I want to look at the triangle FED. Now we see it's isosceles. Do we know this angle? Well, by angles on a straight line, we see that we have 80 and 60 so this must be 40 degrees. Now our base angles will be equal. So that means that 2 times x plus 40 degrees will equal 180 minus 40 degrees, which is 140. x plus 40 will equal 70. x will equal 30 degrees. And that's our answer. Okay, that's the end of this video. You can go to my website for more materials on angles and other lower secondary maths.